Your Story, in partnership with Bernardo's and Allstar. Your Story is a unique storytelling experience documenting the life, times, experiences and journey of parents, carers and young people with lived experience of SEN and neurodiversity living in the Bradford district and surrounding areas. Please note, this documentary contains sensitive and emotional content and is a true representation of the participants, views and experiences, which are respectfully their own, open, honest and genuine. A special thank you and respect to everyone that took part in this project. Without their bravery, openness and honesty, it would not have been possible. I'm Lauren Southgate. I'm an all-star project worker at the moment, which is uh, the job role that I'm in now. I was diagnosed as autistic when I was 11 years of age. So it all started when I was about um, 10 or 11 and uh, I was getting to the stage in my life where um, I was transitioning between primary and secondary school. Um, it was kind of apparent when I was younger that I was different because I'd always walk around the playground by myself. I had friends, well, I had people I hung out with but I wouldn't say they were necessarily close friends back in school. Um, but then as I transitioned between primary and secondary school, it became even more apparent that I was different. Everyone was like growing up faster than me. I had that immaturity that they were losing faster than me. So I guess that was really challenging because um, all I really wanted was um, to be accepted. And that's kind of uh, the stage where my parents were like, oh, something's up here. We're gonna have to um, see what she has because um, something's wrong. Transitioning to secondary school felt really challenging because all my peers around me were just growing up much faster. I kind of was, well I seemed to be stuck in this, um, this loop, well I'm not sure how to explain it, I was stuck in this, um, at this age so I was kind of slowing down and uh, because of that, um, maintaining relationships and actually developing relationships in the first place was just extremely challenging. A lot of um, neurodivergent people are normally either really creative or really academic or they're just kind of in the middle. Everybody has their own set of strengths and weaknesses and I don't think uh, they should be judged for that, really. I mean, I'm myself I'm very creative but academically I'm just kind of average. At first I had absolutely no idea I was masking, but then as everybody, as I said earlier, started to grow up much faster than me, that's when I started to realise that I'm different. I think I properly started to unmask when I started um, as a Healthy Minds Apprentice because I was more openly telling people I have autism. Back at school, I wasn't telling people as much, but because of my job role, I was kind of revealing that to more people. And as a result, um, because all my colleagues were so understanding because of the positions they were in, I was able to be myself more often. I found myself stimming more and more. Stimming is um, self-stimulation. It's kind of moving your hands around, uh, fiddling, one of my main stims is actually plaiting my hair over and over again um, which um, to my parents dismay but that's another story <laughs> and um, I lost my train of thought again which is also something which um, I struggle with rather a lot as I've unmasked I found myself losing my train of thought much more often hence which led me to uh, believing that I could have an attentive ADHD but that's a, another pathway I'm going to fight for. What advice would I give to a younger me? Well, I don't know. I'd probably tell that younger self that you have autism. And I know it isn't really advice, but I'd kind of give her a pre-warning to say, um, 
all of this is going to happen to you in the future. Prepare yourself because it's going to be a bumpy ride. I don't really know where I'm going personally, but I just have to see because life isn't planned out. I'm going to actually quote something from one of the resource videos I did with uh, in my apprenticeship. Life's full of twists and turns, but you just have to keep yourself on the right track. I'm Amber, um, I'm a carer for my younger brother Alex who is 13 and is at a specialist school and I'm neurodiverse myself. I realised I was neurodiverse when I was nine years old. My younger brother had been diagnosed at two and I was struggling with a lot of um, anger management and anxiety within my primary school life. And myself and my mother decided to um, explore that revenue of possibly having autism and or anxiety. It felt like I was different and I didn't know why and I was very upset because my brother is high needs and I felt like I was being grouped in with someone which I resented quite a bit growing up but now we're older and I realise we're just the same. He, he's going through what I went through a, a few years ago and I can be there for him. Going through puberty was something that really affected m me because of the, the hormones, the anxiety around change. And it's definitely a transition which I believe should be um, supported. I'd say um, communicate with your family more because um, they're basically the only people that have known you forever and can support you through what is happening. Um, definitely relationships with parents. I see myself living in a cute little cottage um, with an office so I, I can work from home because I find that easier and um, taking care of my brother for, for as long as he needs me. I hope to have a little annex at, at the bottom of my garden so he's always close. Yes, I'm Jodie, I'm 23 and I've got autism. I've got a little boy and a little girl on the way. So I got diagnosed when I was about 16, so it was during that exam period. Um, I think I got my actual diagnosis a week before my GCSE exams. Um, so I just did a lot of studying, but as I said, just like being in my own little world. It's just kind of talking to myself, telling myself jokes kind of things. Um, I randomly have moments where I'll burst out laughing and it's just because I've said something funny to myself in my head kind of thing. Um, which is why I've always said I prefer my own company over other people's because I'll just talk and talk in my head. I was quite lucky in my diagnosis in the fact that it only took about two weeks to do from start to finish. Um, however, I actually failed the actual assessment of it um, and it wasn't until the person doing the diagnosis had read through the notes from the therapist and she actually diagnosed me based on my therapist rather than my answers, um, which I'm not quite sure how that worked out, but basically just looking at anything that my therapist wrote down during my sessions with her, I got the diagnosis based purely on that instead of the actual questions. At the time it was quite scary 
because obviously, as I say, I didn't know a lot about it. Autism was just a word that was used as an insult in the classroom rather than an actual, like, thing. And so I was a bit worried and scared about it at first, but as I said, you just kind of learn that it doesn't change who you are kind of thing. Yeah, so growing up, I kind of, I thought I was always different anyway. I was never overly one to have friends. I liked my own company. Um, I found it really hard to understand people. You know, I didn't like the social aspects of things. I didn't want to go out and play games. Um, lunch times, I kind of sat in the classroom on my own. I didn't want to be in the canteen. Um, and I didn't quite understand the whole kind of hype around people. I just very much just like my own company and I just wanted my little zone. Um, so I guess that was a major thing in that as well. And that was something that my therapist actually picked up on was the fact of I was alone a lot of the time, but I liked being alone. Yeah, I've got a little boy and a little girl on the way. It's good and scary at the same time. I've always kind of wanted a big family. I've always wanted kind of children. But with the autism, it can be very overstimulating and very hard. Um, parenting for anyone's very hard. Um, but if you've got loads of noise going on, you've got people talking to you, if the baby's crying, you're thinking of all the things you need to do for them, it can get a lot as well. So it's kind of a mixture between having excitement and having that nerves of, am I going to cope okay? I think for me, it's autism isn't a barrier in your life, it's not another problem to add you to your list. It's literally just a word to help people understand you and support you. Um, and I think you've just got to remember that you are exactly who you were before, during and after a diagnosis. It's not a massive barrier, it's not a blockage, and it's just something you've got. You can still live the life as much as you want to. Don't overly make you different, you just see the world in a better place.